In part two, we'll first create 2D overlays for our elevations. And then the latter half of this video, I'll talk more about the clipping planes and controlling their visibility. If you haven't yet, now would be a good time to create named sea planes for each elevation. We could have done this earlier, right before making the named views, but I find this is only really worth it if we're also making the 2D line work. I use the clipping planes themselves to create each respective sea plane. I turn off my site layers to make this easier. Remember that the 2D line work, the overlays, are optional. Most of the time I only do this for plans and sections. I start with the south, south elevation and work my way around, but the order doesn't really matter. I just need to do all four. My process is as follows. I set the active seaplane to the named seaplane for that respective elevation. I use the plan command to get the view aligned. I use a left crossing window to select everything I want. This also makes it easier to select the clipped elements. In this case, the massing for the site. I run the make 2D command. Note the options I'm using. After you run the make 2D command, don't unselect the line work. Before unselecting the line work, I switch to perspective mode. I just want to have a good look at the output. And then I run the group command. Also note that I don't have the group option selected in the, in the make 2D settings because, well, it kind of sucks. It won't do what you want. I group the line work after just to make it easier to move around later on. I then hide that line work and move on to the next elevation. Once all four elevations are completed, I disable the clipping planes. Grouping the output makes it way easier to drag it over to where I want. I can just ungroup it afterwards. There are transform tools, but I find the gumball to be way quicker. I just make sure not to change the Z coordinate as I drag each elevation into place. When I rotate the line work, I make sure I don't end up having it mirrored. Obviously, I'll find out if it's backwards when I overlay it with the other viewport, but it's always better to avoid surprises like that if you can. The next step is to clean up any unwanted line work. Remember to ungroup each elevation I'm also going to create a C plane for working on the line work, as well as a name view, which we'll use later on when we overlay our line work in the layout. There are ways to make this easier, including creating temporary geometry to block out certain elements. As you can see, the foundation is showing through, even though we selected the site massing. That site massing should have blocked that out, but it didn't for whatever reason. If we sliced out a chunk that fits just inside our clipping planes, we could have, could have avoided having to clean that up. One thing we can do after the fact is change the clipping plane intersection layer to red, or another color, just so we know where it is and not to delete it. The cleanup will only take a few minutes, but it's not something you want to do more than once per project. So maybe hold off on this until you're sure there won't be any major revisions. You can do a quick cleanup, like a few seconds for each elevation. In this case, let's say we just delete the foundation line work. Your sections will still look good even if there's some unwanted line work. The foundation line work will be noticeable, however. Also, later on, after we overlay the line work over the shaded views, we're provided a much better reference as to which lines to keep and which ones to delete, so that's another reason to hold off. For the most part, having a few extra lines in one place, a few lines missing in another place, won't really affect the final result. Key elements like the roof, walls opening, stuff like that can't be missing, but a paver stone, don't sweat it. I normally do this with simple concrete buildings. There's almost no cleanup. The way I model my site, however, it might be making this a little harder on us. Next we'll add hatches. This will only take a minute for each elevation, except for the south elevation. That one will take a bit of effort. I'm actually going to time myself. When I use the hatch command, I usually have the boundary option set to yes. There are situations where things work better with it set to no, so you should try it out both ways, but I'm finding more success with it set to yes. You have to be diligent when selecting curves, or the hatch simply won't work. Just like AutoCAD, sometimes it's fussy, sometimes it isn't. When push comes to shove, you'll have to manually draw a polyline around the boundary you want to hatch. This task doesn't actually take that long, but it's really unenjoyable. So this is another one of those things I'd rather place in the once per project category. You can create material types and textures 
that look almost like hatches in your views. This would take some time, and there are probably some potential drawbacks, but I just thought I'd mention, just so you know that there are other options. There might also be better options coming in future Rhino versions. With the cleanup and hatching out of the way, we're ready to head into the layout. First, we'll create a new detail view off to the side. Next, I'll set the layer. I highly recommend having separate layers for each type of detail view. We'll apply our name view, the one from our 2D elevations line work. Then we'll set the scale and lock the view. Since all the line work is on the same plane, we'll just copy the detail three times and then simply drag the grips to where they need to be for each elevation. We then place each detail over top of its shaded counterpart. One last step would be to use the bring to front command. We do that so we can see the line work if it happens to fall behind the existing shaded view. This is one of many situations where having the detail views on separate layers really helps out. In this video, I'm not giving any real guidance on setting up line weights. You'll see that in the next video, when we look over the final result, my hatch line work will end up in front of other lines. This is a less than desi desirable result. There might be two reasons for this. The first, I probably didn't take the time to set my draw order correctly, but the real cause is probably the second reason. And that second reason is much more complicated. It relates to the fact that vector line work tends to draw in front of raster line work, regardless of the draw order. What that second point really means is that if I do have line work turned on in my shaded view, and that shaded view's line work is, is thicker than the same relative line work in my 2D line work, and that 2D line work happens to contain a hatch, that hatch will appear to intrude into the thicker line work of the shaded view. It would take me at least 10 minutes to explain this in detail, but to summarize, I'll simply state that your line work for your cut planes, your silhouettes, like edges of walls and stuff, or anything containing a hatch, needs to be relatively the same thickness in both of the overlay detail views. Or better yet, the 2D line work is thicker. In the second part of this video, I'll demonstrate a few more things with clipping planes, help us get better adjusted to using them. I'll review what we did in the first video. If you remember that we disabled this clipping plane. So I'm gonna go into our layout I'm going to turn off the vector line work viewports, detail view, sorry. I'm going to change the display mode in this detail view to rendered. If we're going to go back into here. We're going to select this clipping plane. We're going to go to our properties layout views and we're going to turn it off in our south elevation so notice that it doesn't matter what i do here i can enable it i can disable it it's going to be turned off in here now so if i want to fix that i just go back of course layout views turn it back on it doesn't matter if this is on or off My settings for this detail will stay just as they are. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to try out is I'm going to copy one of these clipping planes. Now, when you copy a clipping plane, you take the settings along with it. Just be aware of that. That was interesting. I should actually have this checked. Maybe we'll verify that really quickly. Yeah, since I didn't have that checked here. And it doesn't really matter. But just to main maintain some level of consistency. We could have done that. We could have just left it, of course. Okay, let's go back here. So yeah, I am going to copy this. And it is going to take the settings along with it. So I'm going to copy it all the way to here. 
I'll go back into our layout. So I've basically pooched two of the elevation views, and then I turned another one into a section, which looks kind of pretty cool. And I've made these uh, that front stair entryway kind of disappear. So we're going to go back here. We're going to select this. I'm going to go to Layout Views and let's see, turn it off there. North, West. Let's see, let's see if we fix that. Yeah, so now only our stairs are missing right here. What I'm going to do here is copy this. I'm going to set the display mode to my shaded mode. Actually, going to change the layer just to prepare for something we're going to do in a, just a couple of minutes here. Maybe I'll throw it on one of my temporary layer, layers. Color that's nice and easy to see. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to select this. Go to my layout views. So notice how I can't really find those two different views. I did, yeah, I have east elevation here and east elevation here, and they're named exactly the same, so I don't really know which one's which. And you're going to see what I'm doing in just, just a second here. So anyways, I'm going to name this one foreground. I'm going to call this one background. I'm going to take this and move it over top of this. The draw order should stay the same, but I'm going to do um, bring to front. Let's go back to perspective. Now when I select this, layout views. So I want it to clip the foreground, but not my background. So here, this is a really cool trick that you can use. Like for example, if I look at this elevation, I know that this roof is right in front of us, right? It's right at the front of the building. Whereas this one, it's further back. So you don't have to, I guess, um, underlay an Arctic view with a shaded view. You could have a brighter shaded view or darker just to convey some depth that this um, this roof line is quite, quite far behind this. But yeah, so that's one cool thing you can do with clipping planes. Um, it plays an important role when you get into doing plans, you'd use clipping planes in this exact same manner to set up your plan views once we get to that stage. End up looking something like... Something like this once I finally... I'm able to select that. We've got some space junk laying around in there. After I stopped recording, I, de I decided to play around with my display modes and see if I could make this background look more appropriate, kind of tie in better. And I remember that I have a display mode that's basically just my shaded mode, except brighter. I threw that on there and it ended up looking pretty good. So yeah, before ending the video, I'm just gonna do one more example just to get more practice we're going to turn our north elevation into a section disable that one we'll go here if i wanted i could just move this but i am going to copy it i'll press alt and click i'll drag it to try to get the stairs I do also have that footing. Maybe I should try to get that. If I can get the stairs in the footing, I'm going for it. Okay, this looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, what I'll do, do right away is just turn it off 
I think everywhere. Now we just have to find that north elevation. Turn it on. If I did that right, my layout should look OK, except this will be a section now. OK, so that's enough clipping plane related stuff for now. I do want to upload a video on how to make a plan, but that's really just more of the same. So anyways, let's move on to part three.